Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today we have an interesting scenario which was sent in by Sneakshot89. Uh, he says it is 1956 and the brand new HMS Lion is out on her sea trials with her escorts of your ship HMS London and HMS Davis when a weird storm appears out of nowhere. There's a loud flash and everyone is rendered unconscious. When you awake, the storm is gone, but so are all of your radar contacts and radio traffic. A few moments later, HMS Davis spots smoke to the north and radar pings crazy. You spot the German High Seas Fleet. You quickly realize that you have traveled back in time to 1916. Cripple the High Seas Fleet and prevent the slaughter of Jutland. So we have a battleship from 1940. I mean, the year is supposedly 1956, but the game's progression does not go beyond 1940. And we have been traveled back into the time of Jutland. Um, the British don't have a large hull. I mean, the best that they can get is the NG3 uh, or N3 G3 class with a displacement of 61,000. And I'm going to have to turn this thing into an actual tank because I'm facing a lot of warships. Now, let's start with a bit of maneuverability. Um, I'm going to have to try and make this thing as tanky as possible while still trying to fit on as many weapon systems as possible. I know that the enemy also has a bunch of destroyers, so anti-flooding is probably going to take priority. Engine propel or propulsion, I don't find that useful. Uh, maybe a better auxiliary engine, especially with controlling fires. But outside of that, I don't really feel like I need an advanced propeller shaft. Of course, I might feel different when the torpedoes start to fly every which way. Now, this is pretty much all the deck space that I have to work with. Uh, I might be able to fit a bunch of large turrets in front. But it won't be terribly easy to fit those. Uh, let's see what kinds of can I get. We aren't facing... Well, I could reason this two ways. I can reason from the type of ships that we're facing, which are battleships and battle cruisers, Or I could say, no, you know what? The ship's from 1940. Uh, and she's supposed to have armaments, let's say, reasonable for that era. So maybe just 16 inch is better. Although these are the Mark IVs, these are the Mark threes, And look at that change in reload time. You jump from 55 all the way up to 73. And then if you go to 17 inch, it's only another six second increase. So Mark IV really makes a difference here. Of course, I can still boost the reload time a bit and push it down to 44 seconds or a, a mere 33 seconds for the 15 inch guns. Okay, that decides it. I'm going to go 15 inch. Um, barbettes. I know that I'm facing a lot of warships and I don't quite know if I'm going to be able to put out enough shells. Uh, there is one awkward thing I can do if the game allows me and it does. There. This should maximize the bow end potential because I've got nine barrels on the bow. I also have a four weight offset of 56%. So trying to balance that out by putting weight on the stern is going to prove tricky. I've got a small port weight offset. There. Okay, let's add a funnel. And now let's see if I can sort of manage the balancing problem here. I wonder if I can do the same thing here. Doesn't have to win any beauty prizes. I mean, it's a battleship. It just has to survive for long enough to deal a load of damage to the Germans. For weight offset, only 4.3%. This is actually not terrible. I mean, sure, it looks very odd, but hopefully the amount of firepower is going to be substantial enough to keep the Germans away. Even if they have a tech disadvantage of about, what is it, 25 years. I still have a lot of four weight offset. Mm, let's try this again. Uh, 
No, I have an aft weight offset. They need to be forward a bit more. There, 3%. And this one. There we go. All right, 4,000 tons left. I have my main armament. I just need to add a bunch of secondaries because these guys will be bringing destroyers. Again, Mark 5 versus Mark 4. These, however, are 8-inch guns. 15.4 kilometer range with the current propellant. But so do the 7-inch guns because they're Mark 5s. Reload 14 seconds, reload 17 seconds. Um... Let's say I want to go with high TNT propellant, 582, 815, range still the same. In this case, I'm going to go with an 8-inch. The reason is that the 8-inch just do a lot more damage, 815 versus 582. And let's see, I'm going to focus on being bow in, which is why I'm focusing all of these guns on the front, at least as much as possible. Which means I'll have a few guns over here, if possible. But I'm not really going to put too much attention to these things. Because if all goes well, then the bow batteries will finish off anything that gets too close. Alright. Um, we need a rangefinder. Stereoscopic. We're going to need a good radio. Sorry, radar. Uh, a bit of hydro... Oh, sorry, hydroacoustic... Hydrophone station... What am I going to do with the rest of it? Oh shit. That's a problem. How am I going to make this thing work? This is always the problem that you face with the British ships. They just don't have a lot of displacement. Hmm. Where can I save some weight? The anti-flood is not too heavy. It's 400 tons and it'll probably save my life. Autoloaders? Autoloaders are really heavy. If I go from autoloaders to enhanced loaders, I'm dropping a reload from 33 seconds to 49 seconds. That is 50% worse. That's not something I want to do. If I go with a worse rangefinder, doesn't save me that much. Worse radar, doesn't save me that much either. Drop speed. That's probably the easiest way to do it, but I have gotten myself into trouble with this before, as I was not able to run away fast enough. And unfortunately, you cannot quite put the ship in reverse. Now I'm going to go with a hell of a lot of belt, uh, belt armor on the ship, hopefully bow belt, because I believe that that is going to keep the ship alive. Let's put a bunch of armor on the conning tower, and a bunch on the turrets. 15-4. Let's see, what's the biggest armament that these guys can fire at me? Oh, there we go, exactly 61,000 tons. Small aft weight offset, but 1% is something I'm willing to accept. Well, here goes. Let's change the name to Lion and put her to the test. Let's see if the Lion can actually prevent this massacre at Jutland. Or maybe even cause one. The objective is straightforward. Sink half the enemy capital ships or cripple all of them. A spin on the movie called The Final Countdown. I have one battleship and one Mir destroyer versus 11 battleships, 5 battle cruisers, 1 light cruiser and 10 DDs. This is going to be a rough one. Uh, we are heading away from the enemy. And the enemy is also heading away from me. Good lord, that's a lot of dreadnoughts. Starboard turn, turning circle 750, it's not terrible. Uh, we got the destroyer Petard, which has, of course, a reduced amount of torpedoes. Which means I get two sets. And that is all. Two salvos of torpedoes. Lion's already returning fire. 
and I'm banking on my accuracy being better than theirs. I have already hit one of these ships, but seemingly done no damage. Now, the Lion carries a fairly substantial amount of ammunition. I hope it's going to be enough, because there are a lot of ships to kill. So let's hope that the Lion just quickly finishes off these ships. Let's hope that 15 inch is good enough to penetrate these uh, dreadnoughts. So far, these guys are scattering all over the place. We're probably going to see a lot of AI ramming each other. These look like a couple of the destroyers. I'm not even sure what the, the lion is currently trying to hit. This ship? Could have fooled me. Uh, try that one. You almost actually hit that one when you were trying to hit this one. Alright, lion. Very slowly. Pete Hart has 15 kilometer torpedo rays, which means I'm almost there. Just gotta keep going and just lob a, a ton of torpedoes into that formation. I think I'm bound to hit something. And if the AI happens to have a few bulkheads, then that's going to be probably a few ships flooded. Maybe one or two sunk, if I get lucky. And I gotta make them count because I don't have too many reloads. I got two sets. Two launches that I can do. One good thing is that it's 1915 and maybe these ships don't yet have access to hydro. Now this ship's coming right in. 12-4 from the DD. I'm not even sure if the AI has spotted my ships yet. I think maybe not. Which is why they're running around like headless chickens. They're just not trying to fight me because they don't know where I am. Oh, look at that ricochet. Think off the side of the turret. That one didn't, though. That was a fire. Alright, Pitard. I want you to torpedo this... Battleship? Yeah, pretty much. Interestingly, it has been turning its turrets. Somewhat. So it's like it had line of sight, and then lost it. Though I cannot really figure why. Mm, let's see. This is the maximum torpedo range. They're all here. Let's try and torpedo this guy. Petard, torpedo tubes, swing it to starboard. You can drop... Nine torpedoes into the water with any given salvo. Oh, sorry, we have three salvos. No, we don't. We only got two. Oh, no. That's problematic. Identification is almost complete. 80%. I have barely inflicted any serious damage on these ships so far. Try and target this guy. We, at this point, should have a good number of guns on that target. Maybe even all of them. Considering that this deck, this gun over here can fire over the deck. Speed, still 14 knots. Salvo out, including the 8-inch. 8 8-inch 8 actually very accurate at this, at this rate. No, port gun aft didn't fire. But we are taking fire in return. We're trying to hit this guy over here. Accuracy is dialed in. 9%. 88% confirmed identification. Petard's torpedoes. Here. Let's go fish and maybe we can hit this ship. Although, by the time that the torps get there, he might have progressed to about there. This is going to be one tough fight. There we go. Fire and flooding. How quickly can they put out the flooding? It doesn't seem to be serious. The Pomern. Few bulkheads. Might be serious. 14 inch guns? Thank god they don't know how to shoot those things accurately yet. 
Penetration chance, 96%. Bit of damage, nothing serious. I am concerned that these ships are all going to push my way now. I have to start heading out again. Increase speed to half. And just make a port turn. There we go. Another flooding. Once again on the Pomern. This thing is packing a lot of guns and even torpedoes. How do you have those? Port and starboard. Interesting. Alright, we might might flood out the Pomern. That'd be a great start. I am expecting the torpedoes to arrive, but not expecting them to hit anything. They're too spread out. I need to have the DD start steaming back into the fleet. And maybe be able to uh, torpedo the Kaiser Karl der Grosse from the flank. With the last salvo that she still has left. Uh, torpedoes denied. Lion is now broadside to the enemy, which is a risky position to be in. I'm hoping that all that belt armor is going to save me. Next target has been selected is the Kaiser, I think. Pen chance, 76%. There are dreadnoughts everywhere. And battle cruisers here and there, with also 14-inch guns on them. Lion, keep turning away. I don't want you to go bow in here. Oh, we hit something. Friedrich der Größe got hit by one torp? One torpedo. But it might be enough. Because she is flooded. There we go. That's the second battleship down. Leaving nine dreadnoughts still standing. Switch fire to the Kaiser because you're not going to be able to pen the Carl uh, as it's too heavily flanked. It's too heavily uh, bow in. But the Kaiser, not so much. She does not ricochet the shells which are coming off of the lion. The petard almost at a pretty decent flanking position. Not sure if I want them to torpedo the Baden at this point. Destroy the main gun. You can consider yourself lucky that that gun didn't go up. New target, Baden. This one's once again angled. That one is not. Just picking off targets as I can. Inflicting damage where I can. And especially with the Kaiser. If you knock out one of the guns, that helps. Flooding on the bottom. Two compartments and the rest are on fire. <laughs> and the DD is also trying to help out with her 8-inch guns. Now the DD might not have a lot of torpedoes. But she might still be useful in screening against the destroyers. Let's put up a smoke screen before we get accidentally hit by one of those 8 and 6 inch guns. Um, I'm considering torping Kaiser Wilhelm 2. Let's just go with one of the launchers. That's four torpedoes moving towards the target. And get a bit of distance. Weaving in and out. So far, damage inflicted 4,000, damage taken 251. It's because these German ships continue to close, and they're now at a 9 kilometer and still closing. We have inflicted severe damage to this battleship, and hopefully it'll flood. I'm going to need this thing to be gone very, very quickly, because there is a lot more coming at me, including the DDs. Let's have the secondaries engage the destroyer and hopefully damage that thing and put her out of the fight before she gets those torpedoes away. Fortunately, range is only 4.8. So if I keep her at range, I might be able to survive. Baden is disengaging at an angle. I'm not sure if I could still consider this ship a threat. Ooh, Kaiser Wilhelm. Could be at risk of getting torpedoed. DD. At a fairly safe distance. 
Distance is now 7.2 kilometers and closing. We need to switch targets. We need to increase speed to flank. Because without this speed, they're going to just overrun me. 37.5 knots on the destroyer. 27.5 on the battleship. And 30 on the battle cruiser. Destroy the main gun. Whoa. And then some. That's another battleship gone. Next target should be the Grosse Cure first. As the secondaries are working over a destroyer. There goes the V8. Next destroyer. V6. The 15 inch guns are preparing themselves for another big salvo against the battle cruiser. And this battle cruiser has many bulkheads. So any flooding or fire should be contained. But any damage is going to hit pretty hard because they don't have the armor quality yet. They're just 88% buff versus my 110%. Lion is dropping to 87% structural integrity. Let's see. Torpedo targets? No. Oh, look at that. The Baden has really done a lot of damage control and is back to 75% buoyancy. She was orbiting the 15%, I think. And she is back up. There goes another DD. Good work. <clears throat> Lots of those more to come, though. It goes to Kerr first. Seems to have an ammo detonation. And sinks. That's one of the battlecruisers gone. Next target. Kaiser. That's going to be the new prize for the 15-inch guns. Keep kiting away. Thirty-seven percent chance to hit, and the Kaiser does get hit <coughs> and starts burning. So far, the Lion seems to be blocking out most of the damage. I hope she can keep that up. Serious damage on the Kaiser as two compartments start to flood, and that's the rest of it. As the Kaiser starts to take a flash fire and just well blows up the whole ship, and there goes a DD to follow. There's their light cruiser. Oh, actually, this DD is getting fairly close. Unfortunately, the 8-inch guns might not be able to do much. Because they're oriented on the bow of the ship. The stern turrets have now taken target for the Prince Adalbert. I think... Yep, they can both fire. It's an odd turret setup that I have over here. But so far, it's working pretty damn well. Because even when kiting away, I still have six guns which can fire without the use of... Oh, crap. Uh, without the use of a casemate or a, um, a barbette. What happened to you? You got hit by one 8-inch shell. And then another one a few seconds later. Well, that's the end of the DD then. Good damage, look at that. That was 1600 damage from one 8 inch shell. She's gone. Next DD is already being targeted, the V1. Put down the Prince Adalbert. Judging by how quickly we're churning through these ships, I think we'll win this. Another big salvo. <laughs> that was 15 inch. That was probably the stern battery from the battleship. Instantly decimating the destroyer. Main guns, Prince Adalbert, secondaries on the DD. And the DD already takes a big chunk of damage. Starts burning. And is still not in range of the torpedoes. Another couple of hits. No, one hit actually slams into the destroyer. And she sinks. Now, this light cruiser could be a threat, depending entirely on where those torpedo launchers are oriented. Bow and stern? Bow and stern only. Hard turn to port. Um, do I need to turn the main guns this way? Because I'm working on finishing off the Prince Adalbert. Come on, one good salvo. 
ammunition is about 400 shells lighter than when we started this fight. Gazelle is taking some serious damage. She's starting to flood. Prince Adelbert, 6% buoyancy, but going back up. We need to put that thing down right now before it starts pumping out all that water again. Gazelle, down to 50 and 46, and dropping quickly. The 8-inch guns are really doing a lot of damage to this ship. They have done 12,000 damage so far, which is about as much as the wing turrets of the 15-inch guns. And even the 5-inch guns are carrying their weight. There we go, the gazelle's down just before she was able to launch her torpedoes. Um, we're starting to flood, though. The Prince Adelbert is back at 15% buoyancy. She's running off, but she's still fighting. Nope, you gotta give it more lead. That was not good enough, Lion. Lion's down to 78%. They still have a fairly good amount of ships left. I think we're starting to ricochet too much. Time to switch target. New target, Kaiser Wilhelm II. Swing the guns around. We still have all the guns. Yeah, it looks like both the primaries and the secondaries are all good. We have some mild flooding going on the stern, but I still have rudder control. That's critical. We've gotta keep that rudder operational. I think all the DDs are dead. That looks like we have another good hit on the Kaiser Wilhelm II. These ships do come with a few bulkheads. And I think that they're about to regret that. More fires are being set. Most of the bow is going up in flames. One engine's been damaged. No rudder damage yet. Oh, she's angling too much. She's starting to turn off. Switch to high explosive shells. Might not do that much damage, but I'm hoping I can overwhelm the fire control, or the, the, I keep calling them fire control, the damage control parties. Just by putting a load of fires, although floodings also help. Most of these compartments have already been severely damaged, so now they're getting ripped open by high explosive shells. And that should put the Kaiser Wilhelm II down. And there she goes. Next target, the Worth. My ship's down to 75%. Uh, Penchance is good. Switch to armor piercing again. Another good volley flies out. Crippling the Worth and immediately flooding her. Tearing open the bow compartment. And putting one compartment above on fire. Shells. It's mostly the 15 inch which are doing the damage, but I think the 8 inch might be storing some fires here and there. Another flooding. Engine damaged. Switch back to high explosive. I do like those high explosive salvos. Because these ships don't have a lot of... There we go, there's another flooding. You just rip open the sides of the ship once you've damaged them sufficiently with armor piercing. But the Germans aren't done yet. They still have five pretty healthy battleships surviving. The lion's on fire. Sorry, Worth is on fire again. But so is the Lion, by the way. 59%, but more importantly, buoyancy down to 11. Come on. Another fire. Switch back to armor piercing. Worth is burning all over. She's listing to starboard. Trying to find a position farther back where she doesn't get assaulted by the line as much. Unfortunately, I think she's too late. She is, once again, however, angled severely. 
So it's going to be ricochets all over the place unless I switch to high explosive. Come on, Lion. With a good HE salvo. Because we've seen how fa how effective these battle control or damage control parties are with the Baden. As she's backed in 79% buoyancy. There we go. Flooding on the stern. That's compartments that were not hit before. So this could, there we go, be the end of her. New target. Markgraf. Pretty decent chance to pen. Angle, quite alright. 45 degrees. Lions flooding. Structural integrity is gradually dropping to a 68% value at the moment. These guys are definitely doing some more damage to me right now. I have output 43,000, but I've taken 1,200. And we're ripping open another Dreadnought. Now, these Dreadnoughts aren't that much lighter than the battleship that I have. Sure enough, they're 25 years older, but... Combine two of these, and you got the same displacement as the Lion. As each of these ships displace 31,400 tons versus my 61,000 tons in total. Had this been a, let's say, Yamato 2.5, so loads and loads of 18 inch guns, it would probably not have been as much of a challenge. Because then you would just, well, maybe not so much one shot these ships, but you'd be doing a load of damage against them. Lions under 66 and 86 buoyancy. I'm hoping to get rid of some of that water. We've still got a couple of flanking battle cruisers over here, but at decent range. Hanover is trying to fight off the flooding. But with a few bulkheads, that is a very tough job. Lion is also flooding again. The armor on the line, especially that on the stern, is seriously battered. And I think that's where they... No, this time it's the bow compartment where they're starting to flood. Switch back to high explosive. We've battered the Hanover pretty well. Now we just need to start the floodings. Cripple that ship using high explosive. Flood her. And keep a bit of a distance from the battle cruisers because they might not seem like much of a threat, but they too are packing 14 inch guns and torpedoes. Range 4 8. So they're definitely not in torpedo range. More flooding. Three compartments. Lions and a 53%. I'm a bit concerned about the structural integrity of the lion at this stage. Good night. There goes another one. Kaiser Karl der Größe is next. Damage inflicted, 47,000. But here's my problem. I'm starting to run out of ammunition. I have completed the objective, which was to sink half the enemy capital ships. Oh, that speed things up. Structural damage as her ammo detonates. Leaving just one fairly healthy battleship and one lagging behind. Lion is once again flooding. Structural of 51. So is the Siegfried, however. She's also flooding. And it's another compartment. Come on, Lion. This fight isn't over. Ooh, this fight isn't over yet. But once again, that helps. The Siegfried also detonates. Do they not have a lot of armor on the casemates or something? Barbette 4. That's good. Citadel 3. That's quite good. Reduced ammo for shells. Lidite 2 is not helpful. Lidite 2 explosives is asking for trouble. Because yes, they will do a lot of damage, but you're also risking the detonation of the ammunition. As some of these German battleships have been figuring out. Now, the angle here is quite high. Baden has taken some serious damage. Let's switch to high explosive. 
The 8 inch is starting to go yellow on the ammo, which is not good. Come on. I need to get rid of that ship so I can start turning around and deal with these three pesky battle cruisers. I'm also keeping a very close eye on the ricochet angle. Anything below 45 degrees is very nice for armor piercing. But I found that once you go much higher than that, it just starts to ricochet more and more and more. The ship is on fire. Not flooding yet. Structural integrity of the line down to 43%. Of course, by moving towards the front of the bottom, I'm not helping my own ricochet chances. I'm making them worse. See what the AI would select. I think they would go with armor piercing. Damage to the main tire, a tower, set, uh, two fires set on the bow. Engines on the bottom are out, all but one. I'm surprised the lion hasn't been able to pump this water out. There we go, rudder damaged and flooding. Two compartments. Come on, we got dreadnoughts to sink. 35, 30, 25, she's doing her best to fight it, but this ship has been flooded before, look at that, one, two, three compartments underwater, the rudder compartments underwater, or mostly, it's just the bow that's keeping this ship alive. She doesn't seem that flooded though, sure, she's a bit deeper in the water, but I've seen worse. Battle cruisers on. Seven and a half kilometers out. Okay, still not in torpedo range then. Baden is now flooding on her bow. And she's gone. Alright, that leaves one very heavily damaged battle cruiser over there. Since my guns are already pointing this way, I'm hoping to finish her off. But I'm not sure about the accuracy. And the 15 inch gun, the singular on the barbette, is running out of ammo. Inflicted some more damage. I would really need one or two flooding hits. Because then the ship just drowns. Last salvo on the 15 inch gun. Leaving just the wing turrets. This is a waste of good ammunition. Uh, ceasefire. Let's target the Hansa. Save ammunition, only fire when you have a decent firing solution. And it's probably going to come down to the stern turrets to do it. And the 8 inch. Which are also starting to run low. The 5 inch are perfectly fine with still 1500 rounds of ammunition. But they won't really do enough damage against the battle cruiser. Fire. 12% chance to hit on the Hansa. She's been damaged in her rudder compartment. 12%, come on. Lion's 40 for 70. Oh, that's better. Many bulkheads on the battle cruisers. So they stand a bit more of a chance against flooding than the battleships do. But they also have less displacement, although not by much, 3,000 tons. I'm hoping to just flat out overpower these things. Just break down their structural integrity. Prince Adelbert is still trying to fight me. Fortunately only with an accuracy of about 1.5%. It's not that bad. Come on. I'm not doing damage to her. Chance to pen is almost perfect. But I'm not seeing it. That's more like it. Fire and flooding. Look at that fire and that flooding. All over. Come on, get rid of the Hansa. We need to switch fire to the star. Because the star is coming in dangerously close. 4% is left on the Hansa's buoyancy.
doesn't look it. 2%. These guys are very quick to close down compartments. More flooding. But those are compartments which are already flooded, so they're saturated. They won't flood anymore. Switch to auto. More flooding. And we accidentally damaged the Moltke as she was passing behind the Hansa. Oh, come on. There we go. Hansa's down. Next target. Moltke. Torpedo in the water. That's not something I was hoping to see. But I got too close to the battlecruisers. Who did that, though? The Moltke. Port and starboard torpedo tubes. I... There we go. There's no way to avoid that. I'm probably going to get hit again. So with a damaged rudder and a mere speed of 22 knots, which is more like 9 at the moment, since I've taken some damage and some flooding, I cannot turn the ship enough. Fortunately, Moltke is flooding pretty bad. 200 rounds of ammunition left. She's pretty heavily angled. There we go. Now she's coming back around. That's a bad idea for the Moltke. I put some bow... Ooh. That was beautiful. Ammo detonation. And now we can immediately switch fire to the star. And the turrets would barely have to turn since they're already facing that way. Very unorthodox design, having these 15 inch side by side, but I'm very happy with how well the ship performed. Several floodings. Now, it's nice that we sunk the entirety of the German fleet, but the question is, how do we get back to our own time? Because we're here in 1915. Or 1916, what was the era? 1916. I'm, I've traveled back 40 years. How do I get back to 1956? Which is where the line came from. 133 rounds of ammo left. It might just be enough. Oh, another torpedo's coming in. This one might be avoided. Yep. Those do seem fast, though. 55 knot torpedoes. That's very fast for 1915. Buoyancy seems to be dropping quick. She's gone. Uh, check your fire. Oh, shit! The DDs came crawling out of the woodworks. That's interesting. So they had four more destroyers left. I thought I sunk all of them, but nope. Not quite. Fortunately, I still have plenty of 5-inch ammunition left. Let's hope that that's going to save me, because I really don't want to have another encounter with torpedoes. What sort of range do you have, and what are they oriented? That's 6 torpedoes per destroyer. Fire and flooding on the V9. Uh, she get hits, gets hit by one of the 5-inch guns. This is not what the line was designed for. She's designed to keep her threats ahead of her. Because the secondaries just... Oh, that helps. Just don't have the angle. Torpedoes in the water. I cannot avoid. The ship is barely listening to her rudder as is. Maybe... No. I was hoping to slip through, but no joy. V3 also launched her torpedoes. The destroyer's been blown up. 8-inch gun. I think that was the last salvo from the 8-inch, and they made it count. Where's that battlecruiser? There. 15 clicks out. Torpedoes coming in. Oh, this is not going to be pretty. I hope those aren't too large. 19-inch. Ow. Not helpful. Let me guess, V5 is also starting to launch. V3's been hit. She's burning. Can 
Come on, V3. Give up the ghost. There we go. And then I'm trying to cruise towards the Prince Adalbert and sinking that ship as well. Which would put down the entirety of the German high sea fleet. Come on, my five inch gun. How many do I have left? At that angle, just the one. <laughs> She's too far to the port side. Or, or, or actually to the aft. That's the problem. If she come a little bit more here, these guns could also assist. And it does seem like they're all still functional. V5's taking some hits, but with just a few 5-inch shells coming her way every few seconds, she's pretty much unchallenged. But fortunately, she does not launch. I don't know why. Because she does have the range, but the lion is still heading away. Maybe that's a uh, point of dissuasion for her. Maybe that's why she's not launching. Come on. It does feel like the lion's only still turning away. Like the rudder is stuck to starboard. See, I can tell the ship to turn to port, but... Oh, she does listen, but eventually. I have 109 rounds of ammunition left and one more battle cruiser to sink. Six hundred rounds of five inch ammunition left. Come on, V5. Flooding again. Maximum bulkheads on your destroyers. Right. So you don't put it on your battleships, you don't put it on your battle cruisers, but no no no, gotta keep the DD safe. Gotta keep the DD safe. High priority. Once again, she's able to pump out the water. Anti-flood one only. Another flooding. And another. Now she is filling up a bit. Destroyed the main tower. Another fire. This is probably one of the slowest dismantlings of DD that I've seen in my recent gameplays of this game. The main armament is also... Going after the Prince Adalbert, which is once again taking a hit to the bow and flooding. But again, it's a compartment that was already flooded. So as much as we do damage to it, it just doesn't add to the buoyancy problem. We have 47 shells left. 35. Uh, I need you to just check your fire. 35 rounds of ammunition left. What's my angle? Fairly high. Alright, I want you to send out one blast of high explosive. Twenty-three percent chance to hit her. Hit. Twenty damage. Not good enough. I can do that two more times, and then I'm out of ammo. Two more salvos. Seven kilometers out. I'm probably going to have to close in a bit more. Damage to the main gun. Really, the five-inch gun is damaging the main gun. What can you pen at this range? Six and a half clicks? About, let's say, 5,000 rounded up. Eight-inch armor can be penetrated. She has a bit more than that. Ideally, I'd hit her in the stern. Because then I can flood her out. But the challenge will be to get there. Because the line's not really listening to her rudder anymore. And this ship does come with torpedoes. I'm itching to shoot her again. Penetration chance is going down as the angle is increasing. I 
And I think that she might have turtleback armor. No, that hasn't been invented yet in their age. Crypt 2 armor. Uh, Citadel 3. The closer I get, the less damage I do. Ricochet, 45. Alright, here goes. Make it count. 15 inch guns on the bow, swinging back to the target. Come on, Lion. I know you've been through hell. Doink. Damage to the main gun. Sixty-nine percent chance to hit. Nice. Come on. Very much doubting whether I should be firing high explosive or armor piercing. Flooding. This is going to be it for her. Two more compartments are flooding. Three actually. And those were the compartments that were not previously flooded. I have 16 shells left. 3%, 2%, gone! Prince Adelbert sinks. That was a very close encounter for the lion. Whew. Okay, so the lion survived a fight against 11 battleships, 5 battle cruisers, and 10 destroyers, and killed everything. Great performance. But now what? How the hell do we get back to our age? Let me know. And I look forward to Sneak Shot's follow-up scenario. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you guys soon for another video.